guys welcome back to the channel this is part two of our caravan power system upgrade now in this one we're going to be uh, discussing planning your upgrade we're going to be looking at building a power board and we're going to be looking at um, removing the old solar panel from your roof repairing the holes that um, it was screwed through and then we'll be looking at reattaching and putting new panels up so stick with us and let's get into it. Okay, so the first stage uh, of doing an upgrade on your caravan would be to look at the system that you've got currently and to understand the system that you've got there. It actually is quite simple um, and it, with our um, upgrade we're not going to be touching the original BM Pro system. So all of the original 12 volt um, management if you like is going to remain the same. Um, what we're going to be doing is adding to it to make it more effective and to give us a bigger solar system. Um, so with that in mind, the way that I usually would work with this would be to draw it on a piece of paper so that you can understand uh, and work out the components you're going to require. But the idea behind it is to give you um, a picture that you can refer to as to how you're going to wire it. Um, Remember that the 12 volt and the 240 volt system is nothing to be concerned with. The 12 volt and the 240 volt system are two separate systems. The only link between those two systems would be your 240 volt charger. Um, so on, in this, in this um, upgrade, we're not going to be touching the 240 volt system at all. Um, it's only going to be 12 volt that we're touching. Um, and anyway, I'm going to draw up a layout of what we're planning and I'll come back to you. Okay, so um, there you go. There's a, a quick breakdown as to what we've got planned. So solar panels connected two in series into parallel. Goes into um, a 100 slash 50 Victron MPPT through a solar isolator which then goes across to our links distributor. So the original wiring of the van, if you look at it as it currently is, you've got two AGMs in there currently. And what you've got, and these are the original wiring to the battery, what you've got is the original positive and negative that go to the um, BM Pro. So we still need to power the BM Pro, but what we're gonna do so we're going to whip out the AGMs and we're going to put two lithiums in, 100 amp hour lithiums. Now these lithiums can um, cope with a 100 amp discharge. So if we wanted to, we could run a 1000 watt inverter in there, but we're not going to, and I'll come to that later. Um, we're joining these two in parallel. So we're keeping with the 12 volts, but um, obviously doubling the amps. Um, they're going to go across, we're going to wire them through a 250 amp um, fuse and then they're going to run across to a Lynx distributor which is, is pretty much just a glorified bus bar but it's positive and negative and obviously it also has fuses in there. So that gives us the power then inside the van so what we're going to these are in the boxes at the side of the van we're going to be running the power into the van under the bed and I'll be building a board Lynx distributor will be the, the center of that board if you like that's where the power is coming in. Okay, so where do we go from there? Well, that's obviously going through a power switch. So we'll be able to switch off the power at that board um, <clears throat> into the Lynx distributor. And then from there, we're going to run the extras that we're putting in as well as tap into what's currently on the van. So the things that are currently on the van, well, obviously, we've, we've taken the power away now from the BM Pro. So we need to run those cables that originally went to the battery. We now need to run them to the Lynx distributor to get power back to the BM Pro. 
and we're going to upgrade the BM Pro to an HA version of the BM Pro. That will give us 240 volt lithium charge capacity, uh, which means that we can look after our lithium batteries. Currently, the, the, the BM Pro, the BM35 that I have on there, is not lithium compatible. So I did look into putting a 240 volt charger in and just leaving the BM Pro to just activate my lights on water tanks. Um, but actually, by the time you finished rerouting a 240 volt connection to plug it into, um, and the messing around and the extra that we would have needed to do it, the difference was only about 150 to 200 dollars to replacing the entire BM Pro with the correct unit. So coming back to, we need to supply power to the BM Pro. So the power is going to be supplied from the Lynx distributor through a 40 amp um, circuit. Well, it won't be a circuit breaker, a 40 amp maxi fuse. Um, so that's that's powering the BM Pro. So the BM Pro is now powered. We also need to look at, um, from there, we've got a DC-DC charger. Now the DC-DC charger is a Victron unit. It will need to take the supply from the auxiliary input that goes to the BM Pro currently. So what I'll be doing is I will be removing that because the BM Pro doesn't have a DC-DC built in. It's just a um, voltage sensor relay, so which is a, a poor way to charge a lithium. So what I'll be doing is taking the auxiliary input from the BM Pro, shortening it, going straight into the Victron DC-DC, and then again going to the smart uh, the Lynx distributor to supply power to the system. Um, so the auxiliary will come in from there, and then positive and negative out to the Lynx distributor. So that's the um, DC-DC taken care of. My current diesel heater, the wiring on that, the, the diesel heater is at the back of the van and the batteries are kind of towards the front of the van. So the wiring on that currently is, is way too thin and get a lot of voltage drop. So I'm going to cut those cables off and I'm going to run 6 BNS um, wiring all the way through to the Lynx distributor. Uh, that's going to go through a 30 amp breaker. Okay, so moving on, what else do we have there? We have um, the BMV712, that's the smart shunt. So that's going to go in on the negative side with a display. Um, and obviously it has a little red fly layer that has to go to the positive. And then the Lynx distributor itself, that has to be earthed. So um, there you go, that's pretty much everything that we're doing with the, the van. That's what we'll be doing. Um, we'll see how this works out as we do it, all the... Um, all the things that the problems that may come across doing the job but i'm sure that it will go pretty pretty smooth okay guys well that gives you an idea as to what we've got in planned in plans for the van uh, there is a few more bits that i haven't gone through yet because i haven't arrived but once i've got all of the products that we're going to be using um, i will do uh, a, a, an add-on to this and show you what we've got and what's going to be installed um, we'll go through step by step how we're going to how we're going to do it, um, and hopefully it'll be of some use to anyone that's bought either a, a van that, like ours, um, came with pretty mediocre solar power system, um, and wants to upgrade it without ripping the whole van apart, um, or anyone that's really anywhere down the track that's looking to uh, upgrade their caravan to um, a better solar system. So um, if you haven't. <coughs> clicked the subscribe button yet please if you could um, it does help the channel grow um, all of this has cost us a lot of money to do so it would be nice uh, to be able to claim a little bit back through YouTube if we can uh, and we're way off of that yet um, everything that we've bought has been um, through our own research no one's come to us and um, offered us anything so this is all through our own research and the advice that we're giving to you is based on our own experience. So uh, hopefully, again, it's, it's honest advice that we're giving you and hopefully it can be of some use to you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our Power Upgrade Build Series on the Franklin CX22 Club. So today my plans are that I'm going to make the power board, which is going to go um, up against the tunnel boot under the bed. Um, and this will give us uh, a board to mount all of our uh, devices to and also run all the power to. And from there, everything will, that will be the hub, if you like, of everything. Um, so the first stage is I need to get on the van and I need to measure 
the size of the board that we require and also the lengths of the wooden strips which are going to mount this board and give me an air, air gap to run the wiring to the wall. So uh, let's get on the van, let's have a look. Okay, well the first stage is to get these Enerdrive panels out. These are the ones that I carry um, to run our chaser panels. These are our chaser panels to run our um, external solar system um, because we don't have enough solar on the roof. These are extremely heavy, these panels, um, and also take up a fair bit of room. So they'll be nice to get out because of the weight they are. Um, <clears throat> and also these will allow us the weight for the roof. So I'm just going to move these. how many pairs of shoes Tanya needs but she's got them all we're going to be mounting our power system to this back wall here so what we need to do is to measure the width to see what we can get away with let's call that let's call that 1180 in width So board, 1180, it's going to be the same as what we got here, let's call it, uh, let's call it 380, yeah 380. So by 380, and obviously the wooden strip length is going to be 380. And that's going to be to mount it to, which I'm just going to run a wooden strip at each end. I will bond the wooden strips to the, um, the current wall that's there and screw with three screws. And then two screws will go into it onto the board at each end. So there'll be four screws holding it on. And that should be enough should be no need for any more than that okay let's get the wood cut okay so uh, next stage will be uh, to mark out these bits of wood these are so what have I used here I've got 18 by 18 it's white so I, I picked a white color um, and these need to be 380 mil long so there's one and there's the other so we'll mark those up at 380 I guess the tape measure and those will be just to support this board that I'm going to cut um, against the back wall and then the board needs to be marked out 1180 which is almost its size to be honest
which I'm just going to mark it all the way along. Always happens. So that's eleven eighty. And it needs to be by three eighty. So I'll come up from here and we'll go three eighty. And we'll just mark this all the way along so that we can put a straight edge on it. Draw out the line and then and then cut it nice and neat. Come on right at the end. There we go. And then we'll use the ruler um, to cut to draw the lines out and then we'll cut it. Okay, we've got the uh, circular saw out. I've measured and marked out the board and I thought well why not give the eco flow a go so I've put the saw plugged it into the eco flow and what we'll do is we'll turn on the uh, we'll turn on the 240 volts on the eco flow which is this one here so we go okay the eco flow is now shown it's got 81 hours and 12 minutes no draw on it at all at this stage uh, but let's get this cut. Let's just make sure. Yeah, we've got that. Okay. Push it along. use a plane on that just to take that down. Now this is where it's going to become a little bit more challenging. It's a very long cut now. Just want to make sure we're clear of the table. And we'll go again. Okay, so at this stage what I've done is I've trimmed out, I've been in the van, I've measured the size that I need, I've trimmed it out and I've um, planed the edges. So we know that this fits in there nice and snug. And then what I've done at this stage is I've just, I'm just working out, I'm laying out the components that have got to be mounted to the board and trying to work out the best way to put them, the best order to put them in. Um, 
So I'm not, I don't think I'm quite there yet. I'm going to have another shuffle around and uh, I'll come back to you once I think I've got the order right. Okay, so what I I think I've laid it out in the correct in the correct way. Um, you could mix this around forever, but basically what I've got, let's talk you through it. So I'm going to put um, a contact breaker in from the auxiliary, so from the Anderson on the front of the van to the DC DC charger. It's probably not necessary because the actual um, Anderson is fused back at the car, but I'm going to put it in there anyway. I've got one, so I might as well use it. Smart charge controller, um, so we've got an isolator for the solar panels. So the power from the solar panels uh, will come through, we'll put a slot in the bottom of the board here. We'll come up through there, into this, out of this straight into the charge controller. And then the power out of the charge controller will come out, I'm going to put a slot in here, in through there, through the back of the board, and then I'll put another slot in here, right the way across actually, is what I'm planning. And all the wiring can come into the Lynx distributor from there. Over this side, obviously our battery, main battery isolator switch. So again, I shall put a couple of holes in here, here and here. The main power will come from the back of the board into the isolator switch, out of the isolator switch into the Lynx distributor. And the same thing with the smart shunt into this, out of this, into the Lynx distributor. I've got two more contact breakers here that I'll be using. I'll probably be putting these on the same circuit because uh, one's going to be the diesel heater, which will be this one here. And the other one is going to be my um, internal Anderson, which is only going to be rated to run up to 10 amps, really. But it's got a 40 amp breaker there because it is a 50 amp Anderson. So... I, what I use only ever pulls about 10 amps, but even so, we'll put a 40 amp breaker on it. I don't want to be drawing any more than that because the wiring is definitely not 50 amps, but it will de easily cope with 40 amps. Um, so yeah, I'll probably put those two on the same circuit. So the fuse protection on that will cover that. Um, and th there's no reason for them not to be on the same circuit. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I've decided I'm going to go into the Lynx distributor from this side. Rather than from the tabs, which is normal, people normally would use this side because the tabs are there. But the reason I don't want to use the tabs is if I use these, it leaves big connections open that could short. If there was a chair or something touched these two, it would short it out. So I like the fact that these are insulated. So I'm going to come in from this side, which is completely um, hidden under the actual cover. So this side will just remain as is. So that's the general idea. So next thing I'm going to do, um, I'll drill the holes in the board and I'll screw, uh, I'll, I'll work out what these are going to do so I can draw it all on there. Um, and then from there, we'll have a practice with the router. I'll work out where the slots are going to need to go for the router. Um, and we'll come back to you. Okay, so I've pasted everything out on the board. I've screwed these down, I've screwed these down, screwed these down. This is screwed down. This needs longer screws because the uh, thickness of the base. These I can't screw down because again I need longer screws for this because the thickness of the base. I've screwed this down. This one I've not bothered screwing down. I've also marked out where I'm going to put the slots, the grooves. Uh, and these grooves are so that the wiring is not all pinned to the face of the board. The wiring will all be behind the board, out of sight. So it'll look nice and neat and you'll only have a very short run of cabling um, until it goes through the grooves. Um, same thing here, all the inputs will be coming up from under the board into the front. So all these all these links will be hidden with only very short runs. Uh, same thing here, a groove across the bottom. Uh, that actually doesn't need to be as big as that. I will just probably cut it out where it needs to be. Um, yeah, so I should probably just put short slots in there, short slot in there. Um, short slot there, short slot there, so the wiring can come in and out of those contact breakers and then away. And these will all be marked up as to what they are. Uh, isolator switch at the top. Probably a large groove or even a couple of holes there for the uh, main, main power cables. Um, but I'll probably groove it out as big as I can to get the cable through and then taper the edges so that the, ta so that the cable can can bend out easier, so through the board and out. So I'll taper this out quite wide. That's my plan anyway. 
hopefully it all works. Um, anyway, I'm going to have a little bit of a practice now with the um, with the router because I've never used one on my spare bit of uh, plywood, and come back to you. Okay, well, next stage. I've put some grooves in. They're not fantastic. I'm not that great with the router. I've rounded the edges off slightly. Um, but yeah, they, they do the job. They're all the way through. Neat enough. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this with some theatre black. Just to make it nice and black. And then what we'll do is we'll get, um, we'll get everything back on it. And then we'll take it out to the van before we wire it and just make sure it all fits in under the bed and shuts. Okay, the reason why I'm using uh, theatre black is a couple of reasons. I wanted to do it black, uh, matte black. It's cheap and it really, really covers well. So that's why I use it. It's actually when we did our, our fresco and... Um, we boarded in the sides of the alfresco. We used it uh, to paint the back of the blue board. And um, it covers really, really well. You don't need many coats. And um, so because I knew how good it was, it seemed like a logical thing to use here. Um, ultimately, it looks better than wood and black under there with all those components on the top of it will look quite nice okay so currently just making up the live uh, connections to the Lynx distributor um, so I've, I've cut myself a little bit of 50mm um, squared cable I've put an 8mm at that end, a 10mm at the other end and obviously some red heat shrink to let me know uh, that it's the positive um, because all of my cable is orange because of welding cable, which is more flexible. So what I need to do now is to move, to mount that here. Oh, set those off to this here. So I think they're probably about, oh, let's have a guess, 17 mil maybe, maybe 19. Oh, that's a good guess. 30 odd years of mechanic obviously paying off. So all you've got is a spring washer there and obviously the nut. So across we go. Probably would have been wise thinking about this. To have done the other end first. Because this, um, this cable is not that flexible. So I'll just take it off of there. So of course you've got the spring washer and a washer and take it off flip it over pop the spring washer on pop the nut on And it's just nipped up tight and then that can go on there like so there we go and we go washer spring washer no. now I will obviously nip all this down but just be aware, obviously it's all got to come off again, because when I do the connection here. But pretty much, pretty much that'll be when the job's finished anyway. So that's the plastic base. You can use it or not use it. It doesn't really matter too much, but I'm going to use it. So you can just base the height up slightly.
Okay, so that's your live, which will come out of here and straight down through there. So it will come up through there. I've tapered the other side of this, so we should be able to get enough bend for it to go in there nice and neat. Now the next one is the shunt, which has got to go here. It's that way because this side is this side is to loads and this side's to battery. Now we were going to mount it just here. So we'll have a terminal from here to here, which is going to be very short. And then from here out of there, which again is going to be quite short. There we go, that's mounted down. So, let's undo this one. So this is the earth. So we've got copper spring washer and washer. So we need to work out Let's get the fittings. I should imagine this is another 10 mil. Or three eighths, as the Americans like to say. It is. So that'll be that end. And this will be that end. So as you can see, we don't lock, we don't need very much, do we? So we take this, and what I do is I measure it from obviously the stop. So about that, about that much there. I'm using my big wire cutters. Cuts through it like butter. You certainly don't want any loose strands. And you don't want to be cutting any of this, um, these strands when you're stripping it back either. Uh, and then what I use to crimp these is one of these hydraulic crimpers. They're cheap. eBay special. I think it was about $30. And they do a... Well, I'll show you, they do a nice neat crimp. Yeah. Now you got it, nice neat hex crimp, and it's got it good. There we go. So like so. Pop that through there. Make sure that you're, you're straight. You don't want to be um, having to twist the wire. And then You can use the normal single crimpers that just crimp through the middle, but these do a much neater job, much more factory looking. And then what we'll do is we'll just put one bit of heat shrink on this right the way across, so from there to there. like so, much 
alternator. Let's just take that. Getting rather warm that one. So there we are, that can go here. Oh, that's warm. And then this one washer, spring washer, napped. That's nice and tight. And then this end, I bet this isn't. Yeah, it is. Here we go. These don't need to be ridiculously tight, but they do need to be just nipped up. So the advantage with this Lynx distributor is it gives you not only bus bars but also fuses. Yeah. So this is um, a 60 amp fuse. That's it's nice. So we put washer, spring washer, nut. And what you have here is you have the positive with the negative underneath. So when we run our cabling through here, like so, we can run our positive to this one and we can run our negative to the one underneath. So what we'll do, Perfect. Oh yeah. She's good. Same on this end. Okay. Nice and good. A quick warm up. So 
So this is the earth. Come on. Earth goes underneath. There we go, nice and neat to start with. So there's your first one, that's the MPPT controller completely connected, all we need is solar input for that to work. There we go, we'll carry on with the rest, I'll come back to you when I'm, uh, when I'm done with it. But uh, yes, yeah, a long slow process, but we'll get there. Okay, well, <coughs> we're getting there slowly. Um, so I've, what I've done is I've gone along and I've just marked what's going to be going on these fuses. So obviously I've got the solar, the DC-DC, the BM Pro, and the uh, heater with the Anderson, internal Anderson on the same, same output there. And they'll be going through their own uh, respective um, circuit breakers, be it so that I can actually isolate them. Um, yeah, so I'll go through, don't judge me on the straightness of my stickers, it's not my, um, it's not my skill, unfortunately. But um, we'll carry on with this, and I'll come back to you when I've got a bit more done. Okay guys, well, I'm just about done with the power board. Um, I'll just zoom down and show you what we're up to. Okay, so just about done with the power board. Um, so what I've done is I've got myself um, one of these. Just a, a cheap, uh, I think this was a, I think it was about 30, 40 bucks in uh, Office Works. Just a cheap label maker. Just makes life a little bit easier for you when you're doing this sort of a job. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've just, um, I've put through obviously labels for here where things are going. I've put labels onto the different breakers that I've put in. Just so that when I go to put it in the van and I run the wiring from the van, I know where things are going. Um, I've Keep these two to the same terminal with a larger fuse because these are actually really a low output um, devices that are not being used very often. We've put in here the battery positive and battery negative so that um, you know you remember which way around it goes although it's pretty obvious. Main power 12 volt, um, everything is ready to go. So what the next stage is is to take this over to the van uh, put it where it's going to go, uh, make up some supports to actually screw it to the wall. Um, yeah, so that'll be the next job on this one. Uh, we've also got to get up on the roof of the van and put the solar panels up there. And then it's just a case of running the cable and then connecting. Okay, the easiest way to clean your roof on your van is to use a scissor lift. Ah, got wet feet now. 
Okay, well we've got to clean the roof uh, because obviously we're going to be putting new solar panels on here. So this needs to all be cleaned. So what I've done, because I, I, I did message Franklin to find out whether or not the roof of the caravan was strong enough to take weight. And unfortunately, they never got back to me. Which I wasn't too chuffed about. You spend a lot of money on a caravan, and you send a message to their um, to their direct, you know, mailbox to ask them a question and explain the reasons why, and no one gets back to you. So I've erred on the side of caution, and I've um, I've rented a, a scissor platform. So I'm going to get this all scrubbed and clean and then it'll have time to dry out before we take this panel off and replace it with one across there, two down here and one across the back. With a bit of luck they all fit, otherwise it'll be one over there. Well, we're up on the roof, or as I say, we're up on the scissor hoist, but um, close to being up on the roof. And uh, I've got the old panel off, so that's the old one that's going to go up on top of the Ranger. And now I've just got to clean up all this mess. This this bracket actually ripped out. Um, so it wasn't bonded very well because that's just come straight off. So that's a bit worrying that you see stuff like that on top of a new car or fairly new caravan. But I'll get the other brackets off. Then I'm gonna um, silicon these holes to make sure we don't get any water in the van in the van. And then what I'll do is um, once the silicon is set off, we'll uh, give the roof a clean and then tomorrow providing the weather stays like this we can get the other solar panels located and up here um, nice to see it. they've actually used proper um, MC4 connectors up here so that'll be my main supply in and um, yeah all done Okay. Ironically, this bit here is the only piece that I've had any trouble getting off. All the rest of it, all the rest of it has been um, falling off by itself. And of course there's one piece and it's obviously the piece which is furthest away for me. of gently easing the scraper under the silicon to do try try and do as little damage to the roof as possible but of course it's impossible not to damage it you're going to damage it a little doesn't really matter the solar panel's going to cover it as long as it's sealed and it doesn't leak although it is coming off pretty well But, um, I was a bit gobsmacked at how little the silicon was holding was holding it all together. It came off very easily these brackets, which is uh, a bit concerning. It is what it is. Anyway. We'll get this cleaned up, we'll get it sealed up, I've got so many tools up on this trolley, I'm use a bit of um, 
Windex, I think, to... I don't really want to put anything like wash and wax or anything like that on it. I don't want to be out leaving anything on the roof because I've got to re-silicon it. Oh yeah, that's getting it off good. So the whole roof doesn't need to be cleaned at this stage, just the areas I'm going to re-silicon. So we'll come back to this bit here. Of, uh, isopropyl alcohol Fingers and thumbs. So just trying to get all the grease, everything off. And it looks to me very much like this roof. I I actually thought it was. I actually thought that this roof was fiberglass. It looks very much to me like this roof is aluminium. Or. Aluminum, as the Americans call it. But yeah, it looks like it's it's an aluminium panel. So what I'm going to do, because there is burring there where the uh, screws went in. I'm just going to get a screw. Just going to get a uh, drill, and I'm just going to deburr them. And that's better. Because if there's a burr, I reckon it might cause a leak. Because the uh, silicon wants to sit into it rather than around it. This is black. This is the uh, structural silicon that they gave us to fix my new panels down. Obviously, I will be putting screws into the roof.
There goes one. There we go, there's two. Not that you're going to see it anyway, because the panel will go straight back on top of that. Now we've just got to get over the other side and do the other one. Okay. Well that's the roof repaired, the panel's off, um, so the next stage now is wait for this uh, silicon to dry off and then it's get the new panels up, get them screwed down and siliconed down. Um, that's going to be a little bit more challenging because I'm still not sure if this roof can take weight of a person on it. Um, I would say probably not but with this hoist that I'm using, um, it does have a, a section where it enables me to push it to the side here and then slide out across the top. So maybe I can get to it that way. Doesn't give me a huge amount out there, but it should be enough to screw down the panel in, uh, well, each panel has got to be screwed down in eight places uh, and siliconed. Should enable me to do that. The wiring is all in one place, so it will all be routed back to this point. Uh, and again, I'll have to get up there and, and put um, cable tidies in place. Okay, so the brackets I'm going to be mounting the solar panels to the roof with are called Z brackets. Um, and I, they normally come with a bolt to go in the bottom here. But I'll be honest... I'm not sure they need it and if we use the bolt that goes into the bottom it basically means that the panel can't be removed from the roof without taking out the roof screws because the bolt would come down through here you wouldn't be able to get to it so I think I'm going to mount them without that bolt Well there we go, the first panel's all mounted up, <coughs> all four brackets are on there. Uh, I've picked the holes second in from the top so that they're, it's a long panel so it, it will support it properly over its full length. Uh, I haven't used these centre bolts because in the event of a panel going down, I don't want to be ripping more holes in my roof. Um, that would be pointless. These are going to be screwed down and they're going to be um, silicon down. Uh, and they'll be no different to the original panels that were on there, which were L, L brackets with two, two bolts in there and two bolts in here. So it'll be the same. Okay. Well, I think that's it for today. Tomorrow we'll get these panels um, mounted up and up on the roof and we'll get them wired. Yeah, all good. <laughs>